About six months ago, I was hit with a massive wave of gratitude. I was driving down Main Street in Spartanburg, South Carolina, my home for the past eight years, a totally random place that not so long ago I never would have put myself in, but that since then I had really grown to love. And I was driving around, driving down Main Street, passing the Mary Black Foundation and Cleveland Hall and that giant apples and crow sculpture, and I was thinking to myself, like, how did I get here? How here? And with this astonishing husband and two strange and hilarious children, smart and talented friends, a cool job, and a house that I loved coming home to. How did this happen? And so there in my car, I started tracking how it actually did happen. I moved backwards in my mind to all of the crucial choices that I had made at pivotal points. And all these people kept popping into my head. People who had mentored me and supported me, shared their good and smart opinions with me, pushed me away when I needed pushing, and kept me close when that's what I needed. People who had given me a chance, and a second chance, often a third chance. And the usual suspects were there. My parents, of course, my best friend since first grade, my favorite college professor. But there were also the more minor players, my next door neighbor whose passing suggestion that I applied to his alma mater actually led me there my little league all-star coaches who kept putting me in roles of leadership, and my seventh grade grammar te teacher who instilled in me a great appreciation for the English language. And so as I was driving, I came to the intersection, and that's where it all kind of intersected. It's that weird little intersection of Main Street and Fernwood. And I was thinking, I have all of these things to say to all of these different people, but how? And then, Neil Young came on the radio. <laughs> Singing, one of these days, I'm gonna sit down and write a long letter to all the good friends I've known. And suddenly, that random Neil Young, what would Neil Young do poster hanging in my husband's office made sense. I knew what I could do. I would do what Neil Young was gonna do. I would write letters, the old-fashioned kind. Letters. In our attic, there are stacks of them in old beat-up shoe boxes and plastic storage bins, some completely intact and in their original envelopes, others soft and worn from folding and unfolding, opening and closing, reading and rereading. Things I love about letters. Their handwriting how personal it is, like a fingerprint or a portrait. Uh, uh, girly and neat, or messy and masculine, or blocked and curled. Dated postmarks, old addresses, the taste of the envelope glue, and most of all, the stories and the life inside them. Now, I, I really hate to admit this, but this all started when I was 13 and at my first unchaperoned concert where I lied to a boy to impress him and told him that I was far older than I actually was. The sweet teenage romance that followed was short-lived. My conscience kicked in and I eventually told him how old I was. But more importantly, a lengthy and personally profound pen pal ship survived for years. And four years later, when I left my southern roots and went to college, on what seemed like the rings of Saturn, but was actually just the Midwest town of St. Louis, Missouri, my letter writing really picked up. Before universal email, before cell phones, before cheap long distance plans and affordable laptops, the cheapest and easiest way for me to stay in touch with my friends back home was through the written correspondence. My college letters are hilarious relics uh, on scratch paper and ripped notebook pages housed in stickered envelopes. They're obviously true works of art. College was also where my father started writing to me letters, letters of advice, advice on things academic, athletic, emotional, financial, political, personal, social, etc., etc., etc. His letters often and mysteriously came housed in a larger stamped manila envelope 
were always chicken scratched in his totally recognizable but not entirely legible handwriting, and, if I was lucky, included a crisp $20 bill. It was often his succinct parting sentiments that were the best part of his correspondence. Stop worrying, call your mother, don't forget to eat, avoid men except me. <laughs> I cherish these letters most. But then there were the love letters, college boyfriends, grad school boyfriends, and finally some exchanged with the man who would be my original reason for moving here and my husband. There's just something about a love letter, right? It lets you say things that you might not be able to say in person, things too emotional or vulnerable, things too honest. That's the way I feel about it, at least, and that's the way that I feel about letters. Letters are sort of like this whole new genre because they can communicate things in this entirely personal way, like a poem or a song in a musical that the lead character breaks into, not because she is trying to fill time, but because she is no longer capable of expressing herself with mere written prose, spoken prose. Letters, like these songs, are mere extensions of the plot of our lives. Sometimes it seems it just takes a letter to say something. Which brings me back to that intersection and this intersecting of this unlikely town and this random Neil Young song and my overwhelming wave of gratitude and my history with and love of letters. The red light turned green, I turned left, and suddenly I had a new project a letter writing project. And not only would I write these letters of thanks and acknowledgement, but I would stockpile them as I wrote them in order to send out a little ripple of gratitude into the world. And better yet, I would ask a bunch of people to do that same thing, creating not a ripple of gratitude, but more like a tidal wave. Ah, oh, I love this idea. All these stamps and the stationery and this life inside this handwriting all going out simultaneously. And as I drove that same route every day through Spartanburg, this, in, this idea inspired another and another and another. And so that percolating project has now become an evolving community project called Sincerely Spartanburg that has already sent out loads of letters into our community and beyond. Some of you might have already written some. Some of you might have received one. And the driving concept continues to be that kind words can change the world. So if you, like me, buy that, and you have some kind of relationship with or love of letters and some gratitude to spare, I'll leave, tonight, I'll leave you tonight with a challenge, or rather, with an invitation. Whose world will you change with your kind, handwritten words? Whose snail mail address will you pull out from ages ago? Who are you grateful for? So join me, and let's try and save the dying art of the written correspondence and get writing. Because as I've learned in my life, a letter can be a powerful thing. Thank you. <laughs>